due to pandemic schooling, as I like to call it, last year, um, as the pandemic was just beginning, right, right around like spring break, the College Board decided to then change the, the structure of the test, how the tests were going to be implemented, and how much content was going to be on the tests. They said, well, given what we think you've covered at this point in the year, so after three-ish quarters of an academic year, you should have gotten through six of those eight units. So on the assessment in May, we're only going to assess those six units, not the last two. The AP folks basically dropped the multiple choice portions of exams, which are about two thirds of the score for the exams. And they shortened, or at least they said they shortened, the free response portions. Certain content and skills that needed to be learned that were for the exam were either modified or omitted completely. Um, but for this year, they've, they've pretty clearly said that they are not cutting any content out of, of the exams. Their rationale as published is that last year was a one-off, right? It snuck up on us. We didn't know it was gonna happen. And an emergency solution was important. And there was a lot of hope that the College Board would, would do some type of modifications to, to the amount of content that would have to be covered. Their announcement right before our winter break was, we are going all in with all eight units of instruction this year. So the exam in May can be expected um, to cover all eight units which has kind of created some consternation because uh, we, we have far fewer uh, days with students and we have far less time. And of course, you know, cognitively, we know that, that when brains are under stress, it's harder to learn, um, it's harder to retain. By not modifying the test, um, it can put a lot, of, a lot of stress on students. With any sort of AP class or with AP material, um, it requires a lot of time and patience. You can't cover a curriculum in half the amount of time. You just can't do it. It is, it is impossible. And if you do do it, you're sacrificing something. As a teacher, I feel like I have to, I have to cut a lot just because I'm seeing my students a lot less. Uh, what I am curious about though is how many students have elected to not uh, take the AP exam. I think that, that by not modifying it, you've got kids who are saying, you know what, I, I don't think I'm really prepared to take the full thing. Um, and so they're opting out. As a teacher, it's like, oh, I need to make sure the students do really well on this test. They need to do really, really well on this test because you guys are paying for this test and this is an avenue for you guys to gain college credit. But I often wonder if that's like the best way that, I, that we as teachers or, or the college board can really assess your guys' um, you know, skill set and knowledge and depth of understanding. I think that there's the very real issue that, that there's a lot of students who have worked really, really hard this year in their AP classes. Um, but this exam won't be a really valid measure of their learning. And if now you're being exposed and you have less opportunity to practice, I think what the College Board is going to see if they score tests in the same way that they have is remarkably, a remarkably small number of fives and fours and maybe more threes, twos, and ones than they've ever seen before. By only allowing one test, I'm not sure that that is really understanding how all students kind of are experiencing the pandemic. I think that, that they're, they're, you know, in an impossible position where they're trying to please so many people, they're not going to be able to make everybody happy. 